Hi guys, so let's have a look at creating tables in Affinity Publisher on the iPad. Now I've got page one set up here and I've got a table in place to show you what it looks like to start with. This is really simple. There's our table tool and you can see that if I tap anywhere in the table, it brings up the borders and the columns and rows guide. And of course, you can enlarge that by just dragging it out um, any way you like. Take, select the Move tool. You can move it any way you like. Drag the corner out, make it a little bit larger. Now, let's get right to it, shall we? So we're on our first page here, and you can see our little um, sample one. We're now going to move to the next group of pages which I've already got set up because I'll reduce the size of that so I can see what I'm doing but what I've got is some data that's already in a numbers spreadsheet and we'll go and collect that there's the numbers spreadsheet I've got it already selected now I don't know if you're running numbers but we're going to copy all of that Select cells, select all, done, and copy. And that's copied all the cells that are there. Now let's go back here to Publisher. Go to the Table tool on the left-hand side. I'm just going to drag out a table full size there. Doesn't really matter that there's millions more uh, rows and columns in there than we need. Go down to the control dot and put on the Alt key. Tap in there and tap Paste. And it puts that neatly into there. And we've now got all the data from the numbers file, which you can't input naturally, but you can copy and paste into this, this, um, into this table. Now, we'll get rid of all the rows and columns that are extra there. <coughs> Excuse me, because we don't need those. We'll tap that off, just leave that there for the time being. Go back to there, and you can see there's our table. There's lots more rows and columns than we need, but what we're going to do is get rid of those. Get rid of the excess. So <clears throat> now that we have the um, this table copied into the other one, it's obviously way too big. So we've got a set about removing some of these columns and rows. Now, on the iPad, this is very difficult, certainly if you've got an Apple Pencil, because it doesn't obey the Apple Pencil. You've got to use your fingers. And on the iPad Mini, this can be a super pain. Now, we've got G, H, I, J, K, and L there. Let's move the whole thing over. Now, I've got G, H, I, J, K, and L. Now, for some obscure reason, I can't highlight all of those and delete them all at the same time. So I've got to highlight one and then tap. Tap until I get, there we go, delete columns. It doesn't obey the first tap. So delete column, delete column. You can see that it's moving across. And the last one is G, delete column. There we go. Now, we don't want to go any further. We're going to have to go down here and do the same thing here. So let's come down to, it's, it's on that row there. There's delete row. Now, I can use the pencil now that that's up there. And you can see those rows are slowly being removed. Once I've got that menu up, you, you can then use the pencil. Now, because I may want to put some other stuff down there, I'll leave those couple of rows as they are. Now, we'll just go back to the, to the Move tool. I'll pinch that in, and you can see it's way oversized. Now, we can modify that as we like. I'll bring it inside the boundaries. We can adjust the columns and shapes as we like. That's obviously too big at the moment. 
I've got the um, snap tool is on. Bring it down the green line, and there we go. It's nicely centered. Now we can enlarge that as we like until it's a bit, a bit easier to see. There we go. Now you've got a number of rows and a number of columns. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. There's our original, the first one that I showed you setting it up, and there's another one copied, and I've showed you how to do the columns and rows. Now there's two rows at the top there, but what I'm going to do is select the select the table. Now Delete row, we're going to delete that first top row and delete the second top row. Go back to there. Now that leaves us there. Let's, oops, let's not move that. Go back to there. I want that as a top row. Now here we go, I've got to, I use the Apple Pencil to select all those, but now I've got to, no, I don't want to insert row. What I want to do is hold that down, merge cells. So all those cells at the top are merged. You can see that, and it's reduced the size of them because they're not, they're not flowing together. And you can see that cell there that we've got, cell number one. We don't want to insert a row, so we're going to have to resize that. Now to enlarge that top row, and you can see I've got A, B, C, D, E, F there, all the way, temperature correction chart for hydrometer reading, and it's in row one. If you highlight the row, you can grab the line between them and you can move it up and down and that makes the row. Now I'll make that, I'll keep that a bit larger and you can see the size modification going there. Point, oh, I can't get it, I can't get it exactly. Point 0.5 inches, pretty close. And I'm sure there'll be a setting that you can use that centigrade and Fahrenheit there and the RAID and the, and the rating. Now, I want all those numbers on right aligned, and to right align all these numbers, so they're on the right hand side of the column, I've just got to grab that one there, bring that around down there, and then in the text styles over here, just right align it. And there they all are, nicely right aligned. This one up here, temperature correction chart for hydrometer reading, we'll select that one and we'll center that one. Now you can see it's centered in that text box. And that, that chart there is not looking too bad. Now, while we're on editing here, let's come back to the problem we had with the size of that row. And because I'm on an iPad mini, I've got to scroll that up on the right-hand side there a little bit so I can see the three dots. I can then go to the table tool, and you can see there, now we've got cell. The width, we don't alter the width because that'll alter the width of the column. Your columns can't be different widths. Now the height, I mentioned before, I wanted it 0.5. Now I can go down like that. No, I can't. What I'll do is tap on that and put 0 0.5. Now that's better, you can see there. The width I'll leave. Now the next column with the, uh, with the temperature symbol in, I want the height of that column, not 0.299, which is a silly number, 0.3 will do. And there it is, 0.3 inches. Now also, you can see that the numbers are sitting right at the top there, and in this one, the word temperature 
Now yeah, that, that thing's up there, I don't want it there. You can see that's aligned at the top. So let's go back to the tables and have a look at the vertical position. And you can see there's a row at the top there of where they are. And there we go, that centered it in vertically in the column. Same with this one here. Let's go and center that one vertically. It just makes it easier to read. Centigrade Fahrenheit gravity across the rows there. Now we've got nice row at the top, nice row the second one down. All the other numbers are nicely readable. Now down here, we've got right there, that's the zero reading. Let's make that zero reading something interesting. We don't want the fill and it's text in there. So we should be able to make the text not black, but green. Oh, green's a bit difficult to see, isn't it? Let's make it red. Now it's easy to see. Go back to the move tool so we haven't got anything selected. Now you can see that the zero row specific gravity of zero at temperature 15c or 59f and so on across the row there the trouble is we've got 40 104 and the ones on the right hand side which don't relate to that at all because it's a wrap around let's go back there to those ones we don't want those red we want those black. Let's um, get rid of those panels at the side, pinch that in, go back to the move tool, make sure snapping is on. And you can see that there we go. We've got the zero element in red and everything else in black and white. And excess columns removed, excess rows removed, and it's not a bad looking format now, is it? The columns are a bit wide, but it makes it readable, I feel, at this stage. And let's face it, that is a double page spread in Publisher. And of course, if we want to make it the right size for one page, you move that back over there. We can squeeze that in there. It's still readable at the top. Oops, the top is wrapped around and everything's not looking too bad for that one. Okay, we'll move on to the next bit in a moment. Now, let's have a look at this because what we want to do is put a gradient color across that table body. Well, it'll be behind it actually, but you can see here I've got the table body selected and now I go to the text tool which is right there and select the text just below the text frame I select the coloring now there's in all the colors there there's gradients and I've selected the gradients and I want white to transparent which is that one there now believe it or not it has applied it and we know this by having a look at the layers panel and you can now see the layers panel the temperature correction chart has a kind of a gradient on it, but it's not showing because it's not affecting the text. It's only affecting the table body. Now, what we've got to do is deselect the table body. We've got to put in another frame text, text frame if you like, whichever way that you want to pronounce that. Now you can see that it's it's um, got a gradient there. Now we'll select it and we'll go to here and you can see that it's there and, and it's a solid color. I've just put that in as a solid color. Now you can see it there, but what we can do here now is drag that right down. Don't let it go so that it masks it, otherwise the text will show up. And there's your gradient with 
the temperature correction chart and the frame text behind it, and it's now a gradient. Let's deselect that so that all we can see is the text frame. It's got a green board around it, which I put there, and a gradient body, which is very nice. Now, I think we'll make this last bit the last item in this uh, in this little tutorial, because what I want to do is color one of these rows a separate color. So I've got the whole thing selected. Let's just turn all that off. Select there. Go over here to make sure we've got that selected and not the um, color table. Now we'll go down here and just select that one. That's got the whole row selected. Now this should be relatively easy. We've got red text in there, remember. So what we want in there is possibly, well, let's just go for that color. Now we'll go and deselect it, and there it is. Now, because you can't put a gradient on that color, that'll stay like it is. But if you wanted to go to the trouble of putting a little text box behind that, you could color the text box, set a gradient in that, and away you go. The job's done. But there it is there, and you can even see on there that the colored layer or the colored row still has the colored text on the left-hand side, black on the right-hand side, and it's colored a, a, a reasonable contrasty color, while all the rest of it's black and white. And it's all aligned right, which I had accidentally set left. Now, it's if the heading's right, all the headings are right, except I just noticed, and there's something that you can, you have to watch for, I'll set that there. What we want is text and make sure that's all aligned right too. Now we'll go back to there. Now there's all our headings aligned right except for the top heading. And I think for this exercise, the job's done. Isn't that nice? You've got two layers. Well, possibly three actually if you want to talk about the master layer, but we don't want to talk about the master layer. It's like Fight Club. You can say anything you like, but don't mention the master layer. Okay, that's it for the moment. Thanks very much.